this is Mad Movie Mark with another Mad Movie Mark movie review. Today we're going to review The Da Vinci Code, directed by Ron Howard. Uh, quick question before we start. Does uh, anyone out there love Ron Howard? Do you hate Ron Howard? Uh, I've heard many people say things uh, on each side. Personally, for me, I, um, I like Ron Howard. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. First of all, he is a fellow redhead, and we have to stick together. And also... He was in two of my uh, favorite shows growing up as a child. He played Opie on The Andrew Griffith Show, and he played Richie Cunningham on Happy Days. Uh, so as I kind of grew up, I watched reruns of those shows, and I felt like I kind of grew up with him, depending on what order I watched it in. If I watched Happy Days first, then Andy Griffith, then I kind of uh, saw a Benjamin Button type effect. But uh, anyway, you know what I mean. Um, so besides those two shows, he also directed one of my favorite movies of all time. I am currently attempting to try to get through my top, te or top 10 favorite movies of all time. If I were to extend that to 20 or 25, Apollo 13 would definitely be on that list uh, because I think it is pretty close to a perfect movie. Uh, he is a two-time Oscar winner. He won for the same movie. He won uh, Best Director and Best Picture for um, A Beautiful Mind. He also did Frost Nixon, Backdraft, Willow, and Splash. So a couple of those movies star Tom Hanks, who also stars in this movie with him as well. So you have a well-established director, one of the greatest actors of all time, one of my favorite actors of all time. He's a top five actor for me of all time. Um, and also you get like kind of a one-two punch here with Ian McKellen who played Magneto amongst other many roles in his career. I know him as Magneto. Um, Jean Reno, who uh, was in the movie uh, Leon the Professional. He played Leon. And um, I'm sure he dedicated this movie to uh, Matilda at the end of the credits. You just have to watch him. It's probably there somewhere. Uh, Alfred Molina, who played Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 2. Uh, so I'm sure he thinks that these people he's working with are lazy but genius, maybe. Um, and you also have two people from Marvel movies, or maybe not Marvel at the time. Um, they might have been on my Fox, I don't know, but now you have two people from that universe, two people from um, superhero movies that you can kind of live through as you watch The Da Vinci Code. Just think of this as Magneto and think of this as uh, Dr. Octopus. It also stars Paul Bettany as a man named Silas and Andrea, or Audrey Tantone as Sophia Naveau. So you have a star set of cast here, you have religious undertones, possibly summer blockbuster, probably not. I don't know. I was. I don't remember when this movie came out, uh, if it was or not. I worked at Hollywood Video, and I know that absolutely no one rented this movie. Um, but you know, who knows? Maybe it was big at the time. Uh, but uh, this movie is not good at all. Um, very. I went to this movie not knowing basically anything about it. I knew that it was about religion, and I knew Tom Hanks starred in it, uh, but besides that, I knew nothing. Um, I had never pursued this movie before. It's on Netflix. My fiancé and I watched it. Um, so I'd never pursued it before. I never researched it or anything, um, but we watched it, and here we are. So uh, Tom Hanks plays a uh, fellow named Robert Langdon, who is a symbologist who I believe works for Harvard. If I remember right, I didn't take notes during this movie. I normally do, but since I was watching it with my fiance, see, I thought it was rude to do that. So I didn't take any notes, uh, but I'm going to go off memory here. Robert Langdon is a character he plays who is a symbologist who works at Harvard. He's in... Um, Paris or Italy, and he's giving this grand symposium. He's giving a, uh, a speech at this grand symposium, and he's uh, talking about symbols and how there's symbols in everyday life and no one understands them. And uh, he throws up some symbols like Nazi stuff and flips it around, and it was an ancient Egyptian thing. He's like, don't you feel stupid thinking this was a Nazi symbol, you racist. And uh, that's how you kick off the movie, basically, by telling everyone... Reminding people that they're racist is how we kick off the movie. Um, so once this is over with, uh, he goes on to a signing um, thing where the room is still full of people who want him to sign things. Um, who would have known that a symbologist would have such fans, fanfare? Um, so he signs stuff, and then the cop comes in, uh, kind of cuts the line, 
and he's like, and he says, "Oh, look at this picture. It's a picture of a dead guy. <laughs> uh, apparently, this is a, a guy that Robert Langdon knows." So he says there was some. I'm assuming there's some side talk. You don't really hear it, but um, there was this guy who died at the Louvre Museum, and um, he, there were some symbols left on the ground. We need to use like an ultraviolet light, and we need you to come decipher these symbols. These symbols. Uh, so he goes to do it, and uh, he realizes it's some Fibonacci code, uh, but not in the correct order. So he uh, starts trying to decipher this thing. And then Sophia Navo, who is the uh, granddaughter of this gentleman, uh, comes in and she kind of takes Robert Langdon aside and she says, uh, you need to get out of here, your life's in danger. The cops uh, had the picture originally. It's the, there was more writing than what you see. It said, find Robert Langdon. Um, they erased all that. They tampered with the evidence. They got rid of it so they, they could get you here and draw a confession out of you. Uh, I don't know what good that confession would be because they tampered with evidence, but uh, who am I to pick these things apart? I, I don't know anything about the law. Uh, so he ends up going with her. Um, they do this ruse uh, where they, they the, the cops have a tracking device that they planted on Robert Landon. So they do this thing where they, they, they tell the cops to go in this way, then they go that way. <laughs> and uh, the cops uh, chase after them and they end up finding the tracking device, and it's not on him, of course. Uh, they're still in the museum at this point because they fooled the cops into thinking that they left when they didn't. The code that they decipher takes them to a work, uh, the Mona Lisa, uh, where behind is hidden a key, uh, and this key is supposedly going to take them to uh, the Holy Grail, which is uh, what, what they're after in this movie. Uh, the Holy Grail is not a cup or a chalice or a goblet of fire or an ark or whatever whatever you think it is. Apparently, in this movie, the Holy Grail is a person um, because what's being hidden in this movie is the fact that the um, there was a line of succession that Mary Magdalene had a child. Um, there's two, basically two uh, two groups of people in this movie. There's the priory of the Scion who wants to protect the bloodline um, of Christ, and then there's the Opus Dea who is trying to end the bloodline of Christ. So they're both kind of after um, Tom Hanks, or sorry, Robert Langdon and Sophia Naveau throughout this movie uh, while they're trying to uncover uh, the secret and what's going on. Ian McKellen comes in. The build movie. He's a rich guy who apparently owns his own like jet, like an actual jet, not like a small engine plane, but he owns like a jet. Where I, I don't know how that happened, but he does. Um, he's also someone who's trying to protect the. Uh, he's part of the priory of the Scion. He's one of the higher members in it, apparently, and he's trying to protect the bloodline. And when they come to him and they tell him the story, he immediately gets them on their jet, and he also flies out to find out what's going on. Um, so this is like a treasure hunt kind of thing. It's kind of a chase type of movie. Uh, and it's, I, maybe I'm alone here. I, I this, Like I said, this is my first viewing. I didn't do any notes, but I was incredibly confused by this movie. Um, I, I had to really go back and uh, look on Google. I, but I didn't give away the ending because there's a lot there still that, you can go watch it if you want, but I had to kind of Google the pure Priory of the Scion and the Opus Dea because I didn't understand what was going on there. Um, also, these 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 uh, clues that they're finding, um, I don't know if I, I bought into it all the way. Um, the movie becomes even more ridiculous to me when Ian McKellen comes in. Um, I think that's part of its downfall. He's a great actor. There's so many great actors in this movie. Like, it's crazy. Everyone's a great actor, but it just doesn't work. It doesn't come together. Um, it's a two and a half hour movie, but it seems rushed in everything they do. Uh, I, I don't think anything is really explained. And then towards the end of the movie where they start figuring out who the heir of Mary Magdalene is, I think uh, at about halfway through the movie, um, at least halfway through the movie, if you haven't figured out who it is, uh, then maybe there's something wrong, because I, I didn't understand what I was watching completely, and, and I figured out who it would be. I can't understand if this is supposed to be based, I mean, I think it's supposed to be based on fact. I think the guy who wrote the book 
believes that this could be true, but I mean, maybe, maybe there's some truth into what he's talking about and what could happen. But at the end, when they actually like find uh, out there is might be an heir to, to Mary Magdalene, and all, all, all. Of it, it's just there's no way that this never happened. So at what point in the movie are we supposed to believe that this is plausible? And then at what point are we supposed to believe or supposed to realize that it's not true? Um, I, I guess as far as like uh, going and finding clues and going from point to point, um, it can keep your it can keep your entertainment there. But I really feel like the set pieces they didn't use uh, to their full effect. Uh, they just kind of rush through things. They don't they don't let you enjoy the scenery or what's going on. Um, I think things come together a little too uh, easily at the end. Um, I, I never really understood Silas in this movie. Uh, he seems like he's calculated, that uh, he's like doing things, um, he's ahead of everyone. And then at the end, that kind of all just falls apart um, when he's like told something that, and, and he believes it. And um, there's no like backtracking to try to understand things. Um, a, a lot of the characters to me aren't fully fleshed out, which is weird because it's such a long movie uh, that they don't flesh out characters. This is a problem I have sometimes with uh, movies, especially when there's a lot of big actors in the movie, um, that they try to dedicate uh, equal time to a lot of the actors and the storyline in the movie runs long and it's not fully fleshed out, which I thought that this was the case um, in this movie as well. Uh, and maybe I have to watch it again. It hasn't, like, I, I don't know if I've said this earlier, it hasn't 36% of Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if it deserves that. Tom Hanks does seem like he's kind of phoning in his uh, role here. Um, I don't feel like any of the acting performances are that strong. Um, I don't take Ian McKellen seriously in this movie for what he's doing either. And there's a lot of just talking moments in this movie where they're trying to explain things through just talking a lot back and forth uh, very quickly, and uh, it doesn't stick with me. I don't. I don't learn that way. I don't. Um, I can't retain stuff that way. Um, so I'm trying to follow everything they're saying. They're all this religious jargon. I'm not a huge religious person. Um, so when they're throwing this, this stuff at me, I, I don't fully always understand what they're talking about. Uh, I do know what they're talking about when they try to describe what the Holy Grail is and why it is. And it's just uh, completely unbelievable to me. Um, and uh, it just seems very far-fetched and out there that uh, it, it all revolves around how you interpret a painting of the Last Supper. Uh, I have some paintings behind me on the wall uh, that are seascapes. One of them looks like uh, there is a Martian with a backpack on in the ocean, but uh, I'm assuming that that doesn't mean that um, that Martians painted that picture or put it on the wall because I put it on the wall. Um, you can interpret things different ways. Everyone interprets a painting differently. Um, and it just seems over the top and ridiculous, um, everything that happens in this movie. Uh, there's not a lot of redeeming qualities for me. I thought that I really just wasted two and a half hours of my life, uh, which is sad because I love Tom Hanks. This is probably my, now my least favorite Tom Hanks role that he's ever done. Um, like I said before, um, I, I, I like a lot of the actors in this movie. When I saw the opening credits and I saw who was in it and I saw the characters coming on, uh, I got very excited because these are great actors. Uh, but it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Um, and knowing that I got a 36% of Rotten Tomatoes, I know I'm not completely on an island. I do think that is a little, probably a little bit harsh. Uh, but I'm not looking forward to watching the sequels. Um, my fiance wanted to watch this movie. I ended up falling asleep halfway through it. Um, hopefully we don't watch the sequels, but we might do that. Uh, but I would give this movie a, uh, let's say a four and a half out of 10. Um, and that's just because of the, um, star power that it has, uh, and there were some scenes that were okay. Uh, there was some some things in there that were good, uh, but I would say as a whole, it's not a very a very good movie. Um, and for a movie where it's a lot of things that I don't understand, uh, I didn't feel like it really challenged me. 
in like a, a mental way where like some some things a memento challenged me to really think about what was going on. Uh, these scenes just move too quick. Um, it goes from one thing to another too fast, and I don't feel like um, there's anything here for me. So four and a half out of ten. I really I'm not sure what my next movie is going to be. Uh, it's either going to be Marriage Story or it is going to be um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I'm doing finals for school this week, uh, so this has been a light week for me. But I will try to get another one in before uh, Monday of next week. Hopefully, it may be Sunday at the latest. But anyway, uh, I hope if you watched, this was at least somewhat entertaining. I know that this review was probably a little disheveled. But like I said, I didn't take notes. And I watched the movie like three days ago, which is unfortunate. I wanted to do the review right after that. But um, I had school. I had projects I had to do. And I I'm just trying to remember. But I do want to document my feeling about this movie before it completely leaves my mind. Uh, so four and a half out of ten. Thank you. Have a good day.